It's more than a pocket knife. It's a compact creed of self-reliance, trusted by soldiers, astronauts, and adventurers for over a century. From deserts to mountaintops, it saved lives and fixed the unfixable. The Swiss Army Knife, a symbol of Swiss precision and timeless design. It's a piece of engineering so iconic, it's displayed in the Museum of Modern Art. Yet so practical, it feels at home in any toolbox or hiking bag. The Swiss Army Knife isn't just a tool, it's a legacy you can hold in your hand. A quiet confidence that no matter what the day throws at you, you are prepared. But this global icon, this symbol of unwavering reliability, is not an idea or a generic design. It's a physical object born from a single obsessive source of quality. To understand what makes it a legend, you have to go to the small town of Ebach, Switzerland, to a factory that runs with the precision of a Swiss watch, where raw steel is transformed not just into a tool, but into trust. Inside Victoria Knox factory in Ebach, there's no showroom floor, no flashy lighting, just the steady rhythmic hum of precision. This factory is heart of the entire operation, the only site where every Victoria Knox Swiss Army knife is born. It runs like a heartbeat across two daily shifts, stamping, grinding, and polishing in a symphony of creation that produces millions of knives each year. About 2,500 tons of steel pass through this building annually, and every critical step, from the first unspooling of a steel coil to the final gleaming polish, happens right here. You might expect a global brand to rely on a sprawling network of suppliers, but Ebok mostly builds its world alone. The springs, the screws, the aluminum spacers, the blades, almost everything is made either under this one roof or within a short drive. The only significant exception is the corkscrew, which is sourced from a specialist in France. This intense localization isn't about patriotism, it's about absolute control, ensuring every component is identical down to the millimeter. The process begins with mass suppressors, where one powerful strike can shape thousands of identical blade blanks from a single sheet of steel. Nothing is wasted. As the excess steel drops away, 95% of it is meticulously collected, filtered, compacted, and returned for reuse. The efficiency is near total. Then comes the transformation, where the raw steel finds its soul. The cut blanks travel into a sequence of intense heat treatments. Ovens push the temperature to a precise 1050 degrees Celsius, a critical stage that shifts the steel's internal structure into its martensitic form, a hard crystalline lattice that gives the blades their legendary rigidity and edge retention. They are cooled rapidly afterward to lock that incredible strength in place. The factory even captures the waste heat from these powerful ovens, feeding warm water through its pipes to supply heat to the entire complex and more than 100 neighboring homes. In iBuck, sustainability isn't a marketing slogan, it's an inseparable part of the engineering workflow. Precision takes over again at the grinding stations, where automated arms shape every blade down to a tolerance of two hundredths of a millimeter. The final sharpening wheel, a proprietary tool developed and perfected in-house, sets each blade to an exact 15 degree edge. Under a microscope, the finish looks almost surgical. At this stage, each tool within the knife is treated according to its function. Blades are hardened for maximum sharpness, while tools like screwdrivers or can openers are kept slightly softer to allow them to flex under torque without snapping. This variation isn't inconsistency, it's deliberate, sophisticated engineering. Assembly is where automation and the irreplaceable human touch meet. Standard pocket models waste through automated lines, where components are clipped and riveted in perfect, lightning-fast sync. But when you reach the complex, multi-layer builds like the Swiss Champ, the machines step back. Here, skills craftswomen, entirely women as the company found their precise dexterity unmatched, take over. It is more choreography than labor, a fluid sequence of practice movements that sees a complex tool with dozens of parts assembled in just three minutes. Before any knife leaves the line, it faces a final tactile inspection. Workers open and close every single tool, not just by sight, but by feel, using small metal picks to test for the right tension, the satisfying click, and the perfect balance. They wipe the blades with protective cloths, checking for any microscopic scratch or misaligned part. A single minor flaw and the piece is sent back for rework. Here, quality isn't an abstract corporate goal, it is a tangible rule enforced by the hands on the floor, by instinct and by pride. That integrity, forged in steel and fire, feeds straight into a bigger layer of protection. The legal and cultural shield stamped on every real knife. The Swiss made mark isn't just decoration. It's a legal boundary that locks quality in and imitators out. A Swiss army knife earns that label only if every critical stage of its life, from shaping the steel to the final inspection, happens on Swiss soil. This isn't optional branding. 
It's a national regulation designed to stop shortcuts before they even begin. Victoria Knox reinforces this contract by keeping all of its design and tooling work within Switzerland, guarding the very machines and modes that create the knives. It's a closed loop of quality, a promise etched in every finished tool. But in a world of sprawling online marketplaces and too-good-to-be-true deals, this legacy of precision has a dark reflection. And that's where the trouble begins. You can buy something that looks like a Swiss army knife for 20 bucks online, but one slip of that soft counterfeit steel blade and you'll feel the difference instantly. The problem of fake knives runs much deeper than a cheap imitation. It's an entire shadow market built to exploit the very trust that the Eibach factory has spent decades building. These fakes come from unregulated factories churning out copycats designed to pass a quick visual check and with little ease. They count on one powerful reflex. If it looks Swiss, you'll assume it's safe. These counterfeits spread fast because they are tied to no standard. They are stamped with symbols mimicking the Swiss cross and boxed to look official, but the reality is dangerously thin. The metal often bends under basic use, and the hinges can slip open without warning. Counterfeiters lean on the power of Swiss made while stripping out every single process that gives the name meaning. A legitimate blade is hardened at extreme temperatures. Cheap replicas skip that step entirely, leaving them with an alloy that behaves more like soft, brittle pop metal. Inside, the shortcuts multiply. Genuine knives use precisely machined aluminum dividers to keep tools aligned. Imitations often replace them with cheap plastic spacers or uneven metal that quickly warps and loosens. Compare them side by side, and the difference is striking. One moves with tight, confident rhythm of clockwork, the other rattles like loose change. That $20 knife isn't a simple discount, it's a liability waiting in your pocket. What all this adds up to is simple. When you buy real Swiss, you're paying for more than a tool, you're buying the proof behind it. Every authentic Victorinox knife carries a lifetime warranty against defects, a promise so strong the company still stands behind knives made decades ago. The Elsner family, now in its fourth generation, still owns and runs the company, keeping that same obsession with precision alive. Real knives can be verified by the tang stamp on the base of the main blade and the perfectly seamless cross and shield logo, details counterfeiters can't quite fake. So the next time a Swiss style bargain pops up, you'll know the difference isn't just the price, it's the difference between a tool forged from a century of trust and a cheap illusion built on nothing at all. And if this look behind the curtain gave you something to think about, like and subscribe so we can keep exposing what's real versus what only looks real.